Hello, I'm Hao Zhou from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. I'm honored to present our paper on covering clock context inconsistent occurrence for enforcement in Android. To prevent all authorized applications from accessing sensitive functionalities, Android many employees permission based and UID based access control. Permission based access control requires applications to get necessary permission to accept private user data, refer sensitive device information, or use critical system features. Depending on the protection level, the carrier the potential risk to include in permission. Permissions can be roughly divided in four categories. Permissions with protection levels, privilege, and signature can only be gained by free system application, such as system services and ADB shell. Thus, they are associated with high privilege. Since permissions with protection levels, dangerous and normal can be obtained by normal applications they are associated with low privilege. UID-based access control only allows applications with required UIDs to call restricted system functions. Generally, the privilege associated with UIDs of previous system applications is higher than that associated with UIDs of normal applications. Since permissions and UIDs have equivalent semantic in terms of the privilege in Intel, permission checks and UID checks can be normalized to checks on privilege as introduced in a privilege study. Following it, we normalize permissions and UID checks to checks on privilege, including system, shell, normal, and norm. Among the privilege levels, except in norm, system privilege is the highest one as its corresponding permissions and UIDs are only associated with privilege system applications. The shell privilege is lower and it can be Again, by normal applications that are run by the shell, the normal privilege is the lowest privilege among the three. Since system services usually provide sensitive functions, Android enforces access control on their interfaces. Depending on programming language used to implement their functionality, system services are categorized into Java system services and native system services. Since Android applications and system services run in separate processes, Android provide binder and interprocess communication mechanisms for applications to interact with system services. Applications use the binder proxy to communicate with the corresponding binder stop, which is usually system services themselves or special object held by system services. Precisely, applications invoke local interfaces defined in classes of binder proxy to call remote interface defined in classes of binder stuff. In the following, I will use this example to introduce how Android applications interact with Java and native system services, as well as how Java system services interact with native system services. To interact with Java system service, such as display menu service in this example, applications use Java binder proxy to send a request to Java binder stop, and this process has three steps. First, Android applications get a bind Java binder proxy. Second, applications invoke the local interface to send a request to the Java binder stop. In this example, the local interface create visual display defined by the proxy class I display manager dollar stuff dollar proxy is invoked, which internally calls the method transact to send request to method on transact of the binder stuff class I display manager dollar stuff. Third, on transact handles the request and invokes the remote interface of system service where the access control is invoked. In this example, the remote interface create visual display or display manager service is invoked. Since this interface provides sensitive functionality on creating a sensitive a secure visual display, it enforces permission and UID checks on applications. To interact with native system services, such as service linker service in this example, applications use native binder proxy to send a request to native binder stuff. And this process also consists of three steps. First, Android applications obtain the native binder proxy. Second, applications involve the local interface to send a request to the native binder stuff. And in this example, the local interface created is by defining the binder proxy class BP Surface Composer is invoked, which internally calls the function transact to send a request to function on transact of the binder stuff class BN Surface Composer. Third, the remote interface of native system service is invoked, where the access control is enforced. In this example, the interface create display of certain linker service is invoked. Since the execution of create display result in the sensitive operation of creating a secure visual display, certain linker service enforce access control on the application that call create display. Since native system service can provide more powerful functionality, such as accessing hardware, than Java system services, Java system service can rely on native system service to complete certain tasks. And this process includes two parts. First, interface of Java system services called GNI method to get access to native context. 
And in this example, the remote interface create visual display or display managed service called the GMS native create display defined in service control. Second, since there's a one-on-one -on -one mapping between GM method and GM function, the corresponding GI function retrieves the native binder proxy to interact with native system service. In this example, GI method native create displays corresponding GI function retrieves the BP service composer object to request the service flinger service to create a secure visual display. And the system services provide both Java and native interfaces for applications to invoke sensitive system functions. And it is expected that and it was a consistent access control to restrict invocations to these system services in two aspects. First, since Android applications can call sensitive functions of system service through multiple ways in the same context, consistent access control should be enforced on all possible invocation interfaces to the same function. Second, since sensitive function of Java system service may rely on native system service to implement their functionality. The access control in Java context should be consistent with that in native context. Unfortunately, this study showed that inconsistent access control enforcement exists in Android's Java system services. And to the best of knowledge, none of the existing rates mean the inconsistent access control enforcement across Java context and native context for Android. Therefore, in order to fill in the gap in this, in this work, we conduct the first systematic investigation on pro-context inconsistent access control enforcement in Android. In the following, I will first introduce two types of pro-context inconsistent access control enforcement in Android. Then I will introduce the design of IPC Finder, a tool for discovering pro-context inconsistent access control enforcement. Subsequently, I will present our main experiment result and on applying IPC Finder to 14 open source and distributions. At last, I will summary the work and propose our future work. This figure abstracts the interaction between Android applications and system services, as well as the interaction between Java and native system services. It also shows entities of cross-context access control enforcement, including an Android application, a deputy, the remote interface of Java system service, and a target, the remote interface of a native system service. The application has two paths to access the functionality provided by native system service. For pass one, the application uses IPC to call the remote interface IJ of Java system service to access the remote interface IN of native system service. IJ is the deputy of target IN as it internally invokes the GI method GM, whose corresponding GI function GF uses IPC to call IN. IJ and IN both enforce access control on the calling process of IPC. Precisely, IJ enforces access control on GM to restrict it from being invoked by application, and IN enforce access control on GX to restrict itself from being called by Java system service. For pass two, the patient uses IPC to call IN, and IN also enforces access control to restrict itself from being called by the application. This figure illustrates the type one cross-tab inconsistent access control enforcement. The access control enforced in the target IN is less restrictive than that in the depth IG, that is the privilege check on GX is less restrictive than that on GM. The code snapshot shows a real case of type 1 proxy inconsistency. The deputy IJ is the interface for a visual display of display managed service, and the target IN is the interface for a display of service finger service. The deputy create visual display inter internally calls the GI method native create display, whose corresponding GNI function will invoke the target create display. The access control on the GI method is, is a check on the system privilege while the access control on the giant function is a check on the shell privilege. Accordingly, since the access control enforced on the giant function is less restricted than that on the giant method, the type 1 inconsistency is found. The attack application can exploit the inconsistency to invade the trigger access control enforcing deputy by directly calling target. And for this case, the attack application can call the target create display of such a finger service to create a secure visual display, invading the trigger access control enforced in the deputy create visual display or display managed service. And uh, this figure illustrates the type 2 proxy test inconsistent access control enforcement. The access control enforced in the deputy IJ is less restrictive than that in the target item. That is, the privilege check on the GM is less restrictive than that on GF. This code snap snippet shows a real case of type 2 cross-impact inconsistency. The deputy IJ is the interface set renal mode external of audio service, and the target IN is the interface that force use of audio policy service. The deputy set renal mode external internally calls the GI method set force use, whose corresponding GI function will invoke the target. 
No access control is enforced to restrict the GI method while the access control on the GI function is a check on system privilege. Accordingly, since the access control enforced on GI method is less restrictive than that enforced on GI function, a type 2 inconsistency is found. The attack application can exploit the inconsistency to pass the secret access control enforcing target as if it was the Java system service by calling deputy. And in, for this case, the attack application called the deputy to access remote interface supports use of audio policy service as if it is a previous system service passing the secret access, access control enforced in the target. We design and develop IAC finder, which analyzes both Java system service and native system service to discover cross-compat inconsistencies. IAC Finder has three modules and its architecture is presented in the slides. Module J is built about suit and it analyzes its uh, analysis Java systems services to associate access control enforcing their remote inter interfaces to G9 method. Module N is built about SVF. It analyzes native system services to correlate the access control enforcing their remote interfaces to GI functions. Module D con contrasts the access control on health GI method and GI functions to uncover the cross context inconsistency. Module J takes four steps to associate the access control enforcing in GI Java system services to GI methods. First, it builds core graph or services to find access control enforced in Java system services. Second, it traverses the core graph to collect GI methods that are invoked by remote interface of Java system services for the purpose of identifying access restricted GI method whose implication is restricted is restricted by access control enforcement. Third, it analyzes each method in core graph to find a statement that enforces access control, such as the invocation of check calling permission in line three of the course meetup. For the sake of determining the access control enforced on uh, access restricted GI method, first, it performs control dependence analysis on GI method and the statement found in the previous step to identify the access restricted GI method and the access control enforced on them. Module M takes four steps to correlate the access control enforcing native system services to GI functions. First, it builds core graph of the services to find the access control enforced in native system services. Second, to find the GI function that corresponds to GI methods collected by module J, it analyzes the registration process of GI interfaces and maps its GI, each GI method to its GI function. Moreover, it traverses core graph to collect the GI function and core remote interfaces on native system services for the purpose of identifying access restricted GI function, whose execution leads to enforcement of access control. Third, it analyzes each function core graph to find the access control function that enforce access control, such as the caller of check permission in line four of the code snippet for the sake of determining the access control enforced on access restricted GI functions. Both it traverses the core graph from each GI function to the access control functions to identify the access restricted GI functions and the access control enforced on them. To evaluate the performance of IAC Finder, we use it to analyze 14 open source Android distrib distributions, including two official AOSP distributions, and 12 open source the party and realms, such as Lineage OS. In total, IAC Finder uncovered 23 inconsistencies that can be exploited by attackers to compromise the device or invade user privacy. In particular, IAC Finder find 22 cases of inconsistency in two official Android distributions. And we have all already reported this case to Google, Google and the got reverse from Google vulnerability reward program. In addition, IAC Finder uncovers an extra case of inconsistency in Lineage OS, as well as other Lineage OS based rooms. We have also reported the discovered case and it has been acknowledged by the maintainers of Lineage OS. Moreover, IAC Finder can quite precisely correlate access control enforcement to their corresponding GI method and GI functions with the precision of around 90% and 94%. The main reason that causes the false positive is that although the false positives are control dependent on access control statement, they are not the target the access control intends to protect, and more discussions can be found in our paper. At last, I will summary our work. To the best of knowledge, uh, we can have the first investigation on the inconsistent class control enforcement across the job connect native contents of any framework. To uncover the cross contest inconsistency, we design and develop a tool named IAC Finder. The code of IAC Finder is available at this GitHub repository. Apply IAC Finder to 40 open source 
the realms, it's discovered 23 code content inconsistent access control enforcement that can be ab abused to compromise the device and invade user privacy. In future work, we'll extend IC finder to more types of access control enforcement in Android. That's all for the presentation. Thanks for listening.